YouTube. Today I have here Amila Art. Now it took me a long time to get this. It's actually been in the works for like six, eight, ten months almost maybe. Uh, but my Aunt Sylvia found this new old stock at a vacuum store and got it to me. So now that it's finally here, um, we're going to unbox it. And if you're not familiar with what Amila Art is, Amila Art is a very interesting vacuum. And it was a big flop. It was a great design, it was a big flop, but they didn't sell a lot of them. And part of the reason that they didn't sell a lot of them is dealers didn't know how to sell them. These were a quick broom made by Mila with attachments with the cord reel. So that's a plug-in quick broom with the cord reel. Should be a pretty easy sell, um, but it just wasn't. A lot of dealers didn't know how to sell it, and it really competed with Mila's other product, the what we now call the H1, or their quick step um, uprights they've been making forever. So this was kind of an attempt to replace that. And I really like this machine. Even though it's not super powerful, it is super quirky. Um, and I remember selling the last of the stock of these at a place I worked at. And the one I remember selling was a silver, like this one on the box. You can see that this had the Red Dot Design Award. That might be a better representation of what I used to sell. Um, anyways, so people had, uh, for whatever reason, just didn't buy them. And I think part of it was pricing. When we were closing these out, we were selling them for about 150. Originally, these things were like 399, and they had special editions. Now, this one I believe to be one of the roses. So I can't wait to see what it looks like. And we're gonna open it on its backside because I don't really want to tear up. Now, if it sounds like I'm stomping around today, I have a new microphone, and I'm still adjusting the levels and figuring all that out. And as always, I will put a link in the description below to my pocket knife. And if you're in England, I am so sorry that you can't have one. So, right away, this is definitely a Milo when we look at what's in the box and how this is packaged. So, the first thing we're greeted with is this nice wand, and I, I forgot how hefty these were, uh, the telescopes. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we put it together. We've got the tools, this piece of styrofoam, and a little bit of a curious choice is this guy. And I'll explain how this works in just a second and why that's important. Um, we have the owner's manual, and yes, this one's got the DVD. I actually have one of these DVDs somewhere else. I have the wand, and inside this wand there's a hose. And again, we'll talk about this here in a minute. And the sun is starting to go down, and it's a little bit cloudy, so we might be losing light. Then the Mila Art itself, followed by the bag, it's goodies. Oh, this is beautiful. It smells like a musty old vacuum store. Um, I hope it doesn't smell like that when we turn it on. So here is a close up of the art. Now, something that's kind of cool about the art is it has the same caster system that we all know and love in the Mila U1 S7 platform. Lint pickers and just straight suction. So there's no brush roller. And I really think if they had made this with a brush roller again, it might have been a better success than what it was. So let's set this down. Make sure we're in frame. And let's assemble the art. Seems simple enough. Being a Mila, of course, they never really like to make anything that doesn't assemble quickly. There we go. And that all fits in there, like so. Let's check the filters and the bags. And that's something, again, it's very odd, so we'll, we'll just dive into it. 
Now, in order to explain what's inside the Mila Art, because that's really quirky, we have our full bag check indicator right there. I'll turn it on, you'll get to see that. But we have this big button here, and when we see big buttons, we love to push them. So when you open this up, lo and behold, we have a really small bag here. We also have this little orange switch here. And then we have the Mila HEPA filter, which has a gasket and a handle, which is pretty strange. It just slides in there. They also made a charcoal filter as well that fits in there, and of course an air clean. We can see this was made in the second quarter of 2004. So if we close the hood there. Now for the bag. So the idea is that you pull this and the bag self-seals. I don't want to break the bag because it's brand new, but we've all seen this sort of bag from Mila before, but again, it's particularly small. You can see that the chamber is about the size of my hand. We have a small pre-motor filter there. Then this is very strange. This almost looks like a volume control symbol, but it's not. If we pull this out, you can see how the Mila Art works. Now the other thing that's interesting about the Mila Art is the way this bag sits in here, it's actually diverting the suction. So that meant that this machine was pretty prone to uh, blockages and such. Now you can see the diverter valve. I'm going to tilt this back. And you can see that diverter valve right there moving. So that's something with the Mila Art. It's kind of a weak link, but something to keep an eye on if you have a Mila Art. Now I'm just going to insert this back in there. And you can see that this has some stuff that it lines up with right there. And that's how that goes. Spring-loaded bag. And of course it uses this wedge to close that. So now this volume control has been explained now that you've seen that valve. There we go. Now onto the bottom side of the art. We have some nice large rubber wheels. And then on the nozzle, you can see it's real shiny plastic. We see some lint pickers, squeegee, and the same wheels that were used on the Mila U1 slash S7. You know, brush roller. All right, we're gonna turn the Mila Art on for the first time and see how it does. This one is a 2004. And it's been in the box since 2004, and it's now 2019. So I wonder if there's going to be some berry noise. that's been literally the winter soldier here. Well, it's time to talk about some of its quirks and features, as Doug DeMera would say. Uh, so let's talk about the many quirks and features the art has. We're going to start with the hand tool situation, which is the most bizarre thing I think I've seen in the industry. So this is a suction relief valve, so if it's hard to push on carpet, you can open it. It's also the release for the hand tools. In here we have a very small restrictive stretch hose. In fact, you can see how small it is. All right. So then we have the world's smallest dusting brush, I think, ever produced on a vacuum that was high-end at least. 
But then you notice they're not using the standard Milo fitting. So the tools appear not to fit on it. And I knew several employees who could not figure this out even after showing them. Um, so the way this is supposed to work is you put this on, then all this is supposed to snap together. Did I just do it wrong? Uh, okay. I'm going to have to cut this up here. All right, so the way this is supposed to work is this goes on here, and there you go. Now you can use your upholstery tool. So with your limited hose, about a four-foot hose, I'm not sure really how much upholstery you're going to actually be cleaning. And then put all that back. <laughs> That's right. You have to do that. Now... Let's say there wasn't enough room there. You now separate our tools and telescope this out. Now it has given us an S-Bend and a wand about the size of the Mila U1. Except we have the cord hook on here and that something that's pretty strange. Now, this does appear to separate right here, but you can see that there's a button lock, even though there's no button for the button lock. Maybe they intended you to hang this. I'm not exactly sure on that. Another thing I really think it's funny on here is there's a cord hook up here. And that's because you can snap your cord hook while you're vacuuming, you can do it. Now you can also see, uh, coincidentally, the right, wide, wide range of motion this has. And I would say this maneuvers probably better than anything I can think of, especially in the quick broom category. Um, it's about half the weight of a Mila U1 and it just kind of snaps around, uh, almost like the Felix with a bare floor tool, but a lot lighter in the hand. Another quirk of the Mila art are the hook pedals. Along with the obvious, we have our cord rewind. We have our pedal release. But the power switch is something of interest. So as you can see, the power switch is both an on and off and a speed control. Very unusual. There's an on. The speed control, and you're off. So if you just tap it on and off, it goes on and off. Now to put it in low, simply hold it. So that's extremely strange. I can't think of another vacuum that really does that. At least not in an upright form. Maybe a couple canisters now that I think about it. Um, man, that looks funny on there. Let's test its suction. So it's sealed vacuum. It's just under 40. And it's working vacuum is actually less than my cordless Henry. Man, that's weird. detail that I discovered why we were messing around with this here trying to figure out 
what would work best. And that was this little adapter. So this little adapter, actually, for some reason, you could fit it to the end of the wand. So this is different than the U1 wand. It covers the hole, uh, which is real strange because all the tools and the Milo fittings all the same. They'd fit on there just fine without that. So I'm not exactly sure. Other than if you don't want to lose your adapter, what purpose, you know, that would serve um, on there. There we go. So again, very, very strange stuff from Mila at this time. That adapter, it's really just on there. Now one other detail, if my camera would stay in focus, is that the handle has been painted with roses in my case, but whatever art was on the uh, particular unit, that's uh, what would be printed on the handle. And this one, of course, being new out of the box, is preserved, but these always would get scratched up right away. Again, very similar to the Mila U1 in that aspect. We're going to do our usual pickup test. Now we have our animal hair, our flower, our cat litter, and our breakfast cereal. Again, this machine's been in slumber and is a quick throw, but this should, shouldn't be much of a problem for it. For it. that on camera because that was fantastic. Appears to be nothing on the floor. That one Rice Krispies treat got stuck to the lint picker, but everything else looks good. Oh, I do have one Rice Krispie treat left behind. Let's see if it will pick that up. left over from when I was just trying it earlier. What a fantastic little machine. Well, we got the same mess on the carpet. Let's see how the art does. Now, there's no rotating brush. This was never made to do this. But, of course, I must try it. Oh, it's hard to push. did really good with the pet hair. Who would have thought? Well, of course, we have some pet hair stuck to the lint picker, uh, as to be expected when there's no brush roller. Well, I've noticed how much people seem to like big mess tests, 
So let's do a quick big math test with the new R. Well, thanks for watching my video on the Mila art. Unfortunately, you can no longer get these from Mila, but cool piece of Mila history. I hope you'd enjoy, and if you see one of these for sale, I will say, only pick it up if it's in good working order. Parts are very limited for these, being the fact that they're past that 15 year mark. So keep that in mind. I would only get one if it was in the box, or again, used by grandma, uh, in the and set away in the closet and forgotten. Definitely consider a subscription to uh, Performance Reviews. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more content, I've got a big back catalog, but I have exclusive content for my Patreon supporters who have made this camera possible and made a lot of the things on this channel happen. So big shout out to them. Big thank you to our Patreon supporters. And go check out Patreon, where just a couple bucks a month you can get even more content from myself. As always, stay awesome.